Hello family, we thank God for today. We bless him for his mercy and yours forever. Today I'm reading Genesis chapter 42 from verse 8 to verse 38. It says this, Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Joseph remembered the dreams he had dreamed about them and said to them, You are spies. You have come with a malicious purpose to observe the undefended parts of our land. But they said to him, No, my lord, for your servants have only come to buy food. We are all the sons of one man. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. Yet he said to them, No, you have come to see the undefended part of our land. But they said, Your servants are, are twelve brothers in all, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. Please listen. The youngest is with our father today, and one is no longer alive. Joseph said to them, It is, uh, it is as I said to you, you are spies. In this way you shall be tested. I want you to take note of that. By the life of Pharaoh, you shall not leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you back home and let him bring your brother here while the rest of you remain confined so that your words may be tested to see whether there's any truth in you and your story or else by the life of Pharaoh, certainly you are spies. Then Joseph put them all in prison for three days. Now Joseph said to them on the third day, do this and you may live for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers be confined in your place here in prison. But as for the rest of you, go, carry grain for the famine in your households. But bring your youngest brother to me, so your words will be verified. Take note of that, and you will not die. And they did so. And they said to one another, Truly we are guilty regarding our brother Joseph, because we saw the distress and anguish of his soul when we, he pleaded with us to let him go. Yet we would not listen to his cry. So this distress and anguish has come upon us. Reuben answered them, Did I not tell you, do not sin against the boy? And you wouldn't listen. Now the accounting of his blood is required of us, for we are guilty of his death. They did not know that Joseph understood their conversation, because he spoke to them through an interpreter. He turned away from his brothers and left the room and wept. Then he returned and talked with them, took Simeon from them and bound him in front of them to be kept as hostage in Egypt. Then Joseph gave orders privately that their bags be filled with grain, and that every man's money used to pay for the grain be put back in his sack, and that provisions be given to them for the journey. And so this was done for them. They loaded their donkeys with grain and left from there. And at the lodging place, as one of them opened his sack to feed his donkey, he saw his money in the opening of his sack, and he said to his brothers, My money has been returned. Here it is in my sack. And their hearts sunk, and they were afraid, and turned trembling to one another, saying, What is this that God has done to us? When they came to Jacob, their father, in the land of Canaan, they told him everything that had happened to them, saying, The man who is the Lord of the land spoke harshly to us and took us for spies of the land. But we told him, We are honest men, we are not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no longer alive, and the youngest is with our father today, in the land of Canaan. And the man, the Lord of the country, said to us, By this test I will know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me and take grain for your starving households and go. Bring your youngest brother to me. Then I will know that you are not spies, but that you are honest men. Then I will return your imprisoned brother back to you and you may trade and do business in the land. Now when they emptied their sacks, every man's bundle of money paid to buy grain was in his sack. When they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. Jacob, their father, said to them, You have bereaved me by causing the loss of my children. Joseph is no more, and Simeon is no more, and you will take Benjamin from me. All these things are working against me. Then Reuben spoke to his father, You may put my two sons to death. Take note of that. If I do not bring Benjamin back to you, put him in my care, and I will return him to you. But Jacob said, My son shall not go down to Egypt with you. For his brother is dead, and he alone is left of Rachel's children. If any harm or accident should happen to him on the journey you were taken, then you will bring back my grey hair. You will bring my grey hair down to show the place of the dead in sorrow. Today I want to share with you that you are to test your enemy who claims to have repented of whatever action they did to you or against you. This passage of scripture is one that many of us will be very familiar with, but today I'm hoping that by what I share, that the Lord will give us some wisdom, something that we may easily overlook as far as this account of Joseph's story is concerned. In that Joseph 
we know, perhaps never imagined, that his brothers would eventually come to him in the land of Egypt. However, the Bible tells us, even as I shared yesterday, that when they came to Egypt, they bowed their faces to the ground at the feet of Joseph. And Joseph remembered the dream that he had had concerning them. Seeing God play, um, play out that dream in real life when his brothers came. Joseph, who hadn't seen his brothers for so long, could have easily at that point revealed his identity to his brothers. But because he had become a wise man, a man who walked with God and the wisdom of God was in his, upon him and in his life, he decided not to reveal his identity to him. Initially, when Joseph accuses them of being spies, one would think that he was perhaps doing it from a place of pride, of arrogance, because there he was, um, this revered man in the whole land of Egypt, and his brothers had come, and this was payback time for him to basically cause them distress. But in his own words, he says that he wanted to put them to test to find out if they were indeed honest men. And in terms of that, he wasn't just trying to find out whether they were honest as far as the fact that they had said that they were 12 sons because he was one of them. He was the Joseph, the one that they thought they had killed. But he wanted to test them to find out if truly a change had happened in their lives, if truly they were repentant people a change of character had happened because bear in mind that they did not like him they never liked him they never spoke kindly of him they hated him which is why they even decided that they were going to plot to kill him albeit god intervened and they eventually sold him into the land of egypt and so it was really important for him that before he revealed his identity that he worked out whether these people had changed because if they hadn't changed, then perhaps that hatred will still be there. As soon as he reveals his identity to them, it will become a whole different story. And so he puts them to test. The Bible goes on to tell us that he eventually says to them, leave one of your brothers and go and bring your other brother that you claim to have and so on. All of that, he was just weighing them out. He was just seeing how will they behave? How will they react? Obviously, initially, when he says to them, leave one brother behind, they weren't willing to do so. So he puts them all in prison until eventually he gives them another ultimatum and says, well, at least I can release you guys. You can go and I will just keep one of the brothers and Simeon stays behind. And then when they go to their father, they were shocked that the monies that they had paid had been put back in their in their grain that they had bought, which again was an indication that they something had occurred in their lives. These were the people who had killed the whole men of the town of Shechem. So they really had a, a, a track record, if you like. But when they saw the money, the Bible says that they were afraid. They didn't want to be accused of having stolen the money and so on. They could have rejoiced and said, well, we have found favor. But no, they didn't do so. And then when they told their father that Joseph had asked that they bring their brother and the father says, no, there's no way you're going to take him. Reuben offers and says, you can may put my two sons to death if I do not bring Benjamin back to you. Again, that is a sign of something that had occurred in the life of Reuben. For him to even have been able to give that um, ultimatum or to say to a vow or to basically promise the father, say, I will do whatever it takes to ensure that I care for our brother, knowing that he's now your favorite. Because in Joseph's absence, Benjamin had become the favorite of their father. But it seemed as though at this point they did not hate Benjamin like they hated Joseph. And all of this was a test to find out, not only as far as Joseph was concerned, but even for them to maybe work out the sort of people they had become. And so the lesson here is that whenever you have a certain scenario where an enemy, somebody that does not really um, get on well with you, comes and they're warming up to you, or maybe they come and they tell you that they're sorry for something that they did. Often as human beings, we can be so quick to take a, somebody's word but the passage is telling us that we should not really take people's word just for the sake of it, particularly if that person is an enemy or somebody who has persecuted you. You know the person is unkind to you. You've got to apply the wisdom of God. Find a way to put them to test, to test their character, to test their integrity, to test the honesty of the word that they're saying to you. Because if you're not careful, you might end up 
giving the person who is pretending, who is a wolf clothed in sheepskin, the opportunity to infiltrate and to be able to basically bring distraction into your life. Because often when people warm up and they're being pretentious and so on, it is because they have an evil agenda. They have a personal agenda that could actually jeopardize your life in one way or the other. And so the word to us today is that when somebody comes and they say they're sorry, they've repented. That is not to say that that is not possible, but just do not take their word for it. Ask God for wisdom to find a way to put them to the test to work out if truly they're being, being honest. And even if they're being honest, you equally need to ask God for wisdom to know how far you can go on in terms of the relationship with them. For some people, you might have to put boundary lines. You might have to change the whole set out of how you used to relate. Um, you relate with them going forward. You may not necessarily have them in your inner circle like you did. All of those things is ne not necessarily to say that you've not forgiven, but sometimes it is because wisdom may demand that you do so to protect yourself and also sometimes indeed to protect the people themselves because some people don't know what to do with when they're given an opportunity. And so sometimes you do these things, not just for yourself, but to actually help that other individual that may have come to you and may be asking um, for a, a reunion, a reconnection or whatever it is. And that was why Joseph did what he did. And so by the time they had come back, which we'll be looking at, eventually came back to Egypt. He even put them to a further test because he needed to be certain, certain, certain that he could actually have the right time to reveal his identity to them. Before I go, we're going to go over our memory verse in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 to 21. It says, Now to him who is able to do superabundantly more than all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes or dreams, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep his face, cause his face to shine upon you. And the one who is able to carry out his purpose in your life, and in my life, may he bless us and may he continue to be with us all our days. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.